12 Madison was mad he was the president you know well he thought he'd tell the British where they ought to go he thought he'd invade Canada he thought that he was tough the US was either really gutsy or really stupid when we declared war on Great Britain in 1812 after all, the British were probably the most powerful nation in the world at that time, and we had an army of about 7,000 men total and 16 ships in our navy, and we were going to be fighting largely at sea. Now, the course of the war is actually fought in two phases. Initially, the British were at war with France and really didn't have time to devote to the war with the United States. So we divided into a first phase and a second phase. In 1814, the second phase will happen when Great Britain has the time to actually come and make sure they whip the pants off the Americans. Now, the three fronts in the war were along the U.S.-Canadian border, along the Atlantic coast. Great Britain had actually blockaded the coast even during the first phase of the war. And then in the south and on the frontier. Uh, largely along the Gulf Coast and then in the Native American areas where they were still fighting over right to their land. Now, in 1813, the United States attempts to invade Canada. We were successful at several battles here. We did burn the Canadian capital of York in 1813, something that's going to come back to haunt us later on in the war when they burn Washington, D.C. to the ground. Our biggest success along the Canadian-U.S. border would have to be the Battle of Lake Erie. Oliver Hazard Perry, who was a Commodore for the American Navy, is actually said to have uttered two famous phrases during this battle. One, don't give up the ship. And finally, when we had won the Battle of Lake Erie, he actually mails General Henry Harrison the note we have met the enemy and they are ours, meaning that we had won the battle. And this boosts the morale of the Americans during the war greatly. So it keeps us in the fight. It keeps us going, even though, again, we were fighting a much larger army and navy than the one that we had in the United States at that time. Another major military victory was that of the USS Constitution, which will be nicknamed Old Ironsides. They actually meet early on in the war in 1812, um, the British ship, the HMS Guerriere, and it's actually during the battle that it seems that the cannonballs are just bouncing off the sides of the USS Constitution. So the USS Constitution then is given the nickname Ironsides because it seems as though the cannonballs are just bouncing off of iron when really it was the live oak hull of the ship that was impenetrable to the cannonballs. So again, this is one of the legacies of the War of 1812. Now, if you remember earlier, I had mentioned that the Americans had burned the Canadian capital of York. Well, now it's our turn. In 1814, the British actually invade the capital of Washington, D.C. Um, President James Madison is outside the city limits, defending the city at about the same time. The British march in. But to our honor, Dolly Madison, James Madison's wife, actually saves many of the relics from the White House before they are burned, including the portrait of General George Washington. Instead, we went to Washington and burned down all his stuff in the White House. Burn, 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 and we're the ones that did it. It burned, 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 while the president ran and cried. It burned, 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 and things were very historical. And the Americans ran and cried like a bunch of little babies. Wah, 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 in the War of 1812. Dolly Madison breaks the frame around the portrait of George Washington done by Gilbert Stewart. They roll it up, and along with several other pieces of furniture and important items, they escape Washington, D.C. Now, something odd that you might find is that 
it's at the time that they're burning Washington, D.C. to the ground that a hurricane actually strikes Washington, D.C. and it limits the amount of damage that the British can do. So maybe it was a sign that we were the favored republic. I don't know. That's how some people might read it. Now, going on a little after this is the Battle of Fort McHenry, which again gives us one of the American symbols that we cherish that was also created during the War of 1812, and that is the poem that was later turned into our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. It was written by Francis Scott Key, who was actually taken prisoner aboard a British warship during the bombardment of Fort McHenry. And he writes this poem as he watches the bombing of the fort. And as the sun rises and he sees that our flag is still above the fort, he knows that we have won the battle. And so this actually becomes a very famous part of the War of 1812. It's later set to music, and it becomes our national anthem. Not everyone, however, was as confident about the war, and so people in New England, they actually threatened to secede from the United States if the war did not end. Remember, most people in New England made their money from trade and shipping, and during the War of 1812, that shipping was interrupted because that's where most of the fighting was taking place, was at sea, not to mention the fact that the British had blockaded our coast. Luckily for us, about the time they were threatening to secede, we did sign the Treaty of Ghent in Belgium, which ended the war. However, there was one final battle that actually took place almost two weeks after the war had ended, and this was the Battle of New Orleans. General Andrew Jackson, using some of his own money, actually took a group of men south to New Orleans to defend the city. Remember, New Orleans was a major seaport at that time, um, just as it is now. And General Jackson was there along with a group of pirates, criminals, uh, runaway slaves, anybody he could find to defend the city. And later on in the week, you'll actually do an assignment in which you listen to the song, The Battle of New Orleans by Johnny Horton, and answer some questions about the battle itself. Now, after General Ed Jackson's major win at the Battle of New Orleans, we are feeling quite confident about ourselves as a country. And it's very important that you write down all of the War of 1812's legacy, because these are important and will actually define the next 20 years or so of U.S. history. It's a period of growth economically, physically, and also a period of prosperity in which we feel quite good about being Americans.